I'm going to call this meeting to order, special uh, board meeting with school trustees and of course the joint meeting with the city of Adam, uh, administration and uh, elected officials. It's uh, Tuesday, June uh, 18th, 2024. It's 12.03 uh, p.m. Uh, PM. I'd like to uh, call this special city council meeting uh, to order along with the school district. And we do have a full quorum in front. We have Don ISD, all seven are present. And uh, at this time, I ask us all to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. Thank you. Good work. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please stand for moment of silence. operations officer and I know we've been working in collaboration as we enter into um, some of our bond projects at Donna High School in particular traffic is um, something that we're, we're planning for and want to make sure that we're, we're mitigating concerns moving into the, the future so um, I'll open it up to, to our team if there's questions I know the city sent over um, some, some information and just we generated a potential MOU that you guys have a, a copy of as well. Okay, so we're that we're at that state right now when we are wanting to, to discuss this particular item. Any of our trustees you have any questions or comments? It's gonna uh, be paid out of yeah, before we before we dive into it again, I, I too want to just reiterate the fact that the, the, the city, the commissioners, and our main board temp and manager, along with our trustees and our administration, uh, come together because <clears throat> it's really important that we that we combine together and join forces in in projects such as this. And hopefully, this, this will be the first of several to come because at the end of the day, uh, it's one town, one school district, and we've got to be moving forward and. Uh, I don't know if everyone is, is, is certain or is, uh, specifically know what history we're talking about. Uh, a lot of people don't know that it's history. They'll refer to it as where Girls Warden used to be at. Well, okay, well, that's history when you go east and west. Uh, between the railroad tracks and, and south of Donna High School, yes, that's history. And obviously, the school that we have over there on the east side is Truman Price Elementary. So the objective from our understanding is that it will go from Salinas Boulevard and come across west to east all the way through uh, behind the Fine Arts Auditorium and keep going east into Truman Price, between softball field and Truman Price, and connect to Victoria. And that, that is my understanding, so I don't know the width, I don't know the details, but uh, obviously something that's going to help all of us. Uh, with regard to the traffic and you know, the people are coming in and going out driving. Uh, I do want to say that the, the venture that we did last time together <clears throat> was on Redskin Avenue. And that Redskin Avenue is when, when, again, we had assistance from the city and we had that little curb or the road that went by the drainage ditch and went into the frontage road of Expressway 3. And man, that, is, that helped tremendously. So we appreciate that uh, with us collaboration and, and working together on that because it makes a big difference. People that don't know what it was like before, 
take for granted that, oh, it's no biggie. But before, it was, it was horrible. So we appreciate that, that project as well. And I'm glad to have two questions for Mr. Pettis. Mr. Pettis, it was part of our, I mean, when we went out for the bond not. that was included? It, 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 it includes it as part of the construction of the high school because uh, we okay. are working on the traffic control and all that. But so that comes, that comes into play. And what is the projected going to cost out of the bond going to be for that particular project? Just for the street enough? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're, we got a more of this estimate right now. Our share would probably be about 800000 Oh, all right. Thank you. I have one question. Uh, who are the engineers? And we, we have not selected it. It's, uh, it's on further on the agenda. Uh, to, okay. to, you want to move on that? We need the work authorization. But it, it, we'll do it just, uh, before they know the meeting. Oh, okay. Yes. <clears throat> uh, a couple of questions. Uh, we have a breakdown of the cost. Can you read the item number one of the start? Oh, yeah. no. The discussion and possible action to approve memorandum of understanding with the non independent school district for proposed Hester Street project. Whether or not. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. I just uh, wanted to see if we had a breakdown of the cost. Is this, is this what this yeah. is? Okay, how do we propose? Uh, are we sharing the cost of what we're doing? The, the, the way we have the uh, MOU right now, Commissioner, is we have a we have it where the city would uh, provide all the labor and equipment for the for the for the street, and we have the school paying for all the material and the approximate uh, cost of the materials about a little bit less than eight hundred thousand seven hundred thirty three thousand, uh, and then there is a, a 50 50 split on the engineering fees. That's the way the MOU is, is put together. And that's included, Mr. Pettis, in the 800 that you just quoted, yes, including him. Okay. <coughs> what would be the timeline on the project, or what are we, we anticipating? Well, I think what we're trying to see uh, if we can get it done before uh, before school starts. We have we have uh, we're paving a lot of streets, so we have to coordinate it with our with our paving group. But I think that's the intent. I think this would be a priority. Yes. Since, uh, you know, right now there's a uh, break in the school, so I think right now would be good for for us to start this project. I know it's going to be a, a big project because we're I think we're looking at sidewalks and uh, <coughs> uh, three, well. three lanes, curb and gutter. So I think what's it's the estimate of time for something like that? It, it, it's going to take us a, a couple of weeks for us to get this done. I think the main thing is the, the material. We, we do have a, uh, the proposed engineer uh, that can give us a rundown a little and in the next agenda. It's about 4,200 linear feet of street. We're property. not going through any private properties, are we? This is all school property. Yeah. And, school and, and that, that's the other thing that's in the MOU. Uh, the, the school providing the 60 feet of right away that's needed. Okay. Okay, I'm going to be Hester, but I think that the address between Price is Roberts, Avenue. What happens there? Like, do we go to Hester? Does it go to Roberts? Oh, what's that, Joe? I think that's on the city side. You guys will have to decide. But people want to just rename it to Hester, is what I would assume. Maybe the whole thing to Hester? Yeah, they're line straight through Hester, so they're going to have to be Hester. Roberts is a little bit further uh, south towards the uh, railroad track. Yeah, right. so it's going to be Hester. So it has to be yeah, Hester. Hester. Yeah, but now it's Robert's on that side. Yeah, but it's Robert is very good. 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 Yeah, but it's
You don't have it? No. I don't even have the two of your senior. That's pretty good. Oh, that's the one? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The agenda? I don't know about that. The agenda? Oh, new, to expand. We have nice little letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll get it right now. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to add also, I think we're still item one, but uh, we definitely need, I, I think it would uh, really help the school and, and the city as well, because uh, I don't mind, I have an assistant living uh, just uh, north of that, and there's uh, McDonald's, and uh, a, lot of red, a, lot of, a lot of retail, and uh, there's a lot of congestion there, you know, and I think uh, that'll definitely help uh, everyone in Bond, including, of course, the students, but also the citizens. I think it's uh, way past long due, so I think it's a great deal. I'm glad we're here talking about this today. Yes, and we the, the the assisted living it's not blocking because right now it the the traffic blocks, so we can't get out. It's hard to get out. It's yeah. hard to get out. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. will help it. The, the traffic is going to go up. Yeah. Is it going to change where the students are going to get picked up in the high school or not? Yeah. That's a fact. It, it so, the plan for yes, the plan. Oh, yeah. yeah, our our plan is to transition once the the new cafeteria is built. We've got some projects that have to happen, but it will help us. It's definitely ease congestion right there. With three schools right there, it really hits us pretty hard with traffic before and after school. I do want to point out that by working together, we'll, we'll be saving uh, about seven hundred thirty thousand dollars by by doing the the work as, as opposed to us contracting it somebody out there to do that by work and so but I think it's a good it's a good deal for, for the community and for the citizens that the city how much was that say seven hundred seven hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars point seven million dollars that's great it's great it's good saved up in different streets uh, we're right now in the process of opening North Avenue from four ninety three all the way to Maine. Uh, we're pretty close to getting that project done, so hopefully that will alleviate some of that traffic in that area as well. So. Okay, we get a copy of that picture. Oh, it's a sidewalk, right? Yeah, this is good curve gutter and four feet sidewalk. Oh, see that four foot sidewalk? Yes. I see where you have to do that little, devi that little deviation yes. because of that uh, environmental pond or whatever it is that uh, I have in that corner. They don't use it anymore, but I get that for the I believe that uh, when we looked at this project out in the field, uh, there was a concern or a question on the intersection of Victoria Road, uh, being that we might need uh, additional right of way, but uh, I think that in that area, I think we stay with a two lane, because we still have all that traffic coming in from the, from the, uh, from the north side of Victoria to the business, and you've got traffic backed up all the way, so. There's no sense of making it a three-way. We need to buy additional right-of-way in that area. On which one, uh, Victoria? Uh, uh, Victoria. And, <laughs> is there anything in the future that that's going to be wide to this on pits? Uh, There's two. Uh, well, it was tried by the county a couple of years back, but you've got gas line, power lines, you've got all those pump trees. So it was a, it was a hassle. Well, some of the pump trees have already been removed. So, so but there's still a lot of utilities. Also. Even though on the on the east side, on the where the uh, Fitzgeralds have property. Yeah, well, you might. You, there might be a way right now to at least because 
what it, what uh, the intersection of, of uh, business in Victoria. But further uh, north, uh, there's still just too many utilities. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's something that's very much needed right now. Yeah. And if and something's going to happen, it needs to happen now, because I think they, 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 they're they building a church right in the corner. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Those five acres got sold to some church. So, I mean, if, if we're going to do something like that, that's something that needs to be addressed now, I would think, because it's something that's very much needed. That traffic backs up all the way yeah. close to the The, the only thing is if we address it, it's not going to be after the summer. Right. Yeah, well, we, we can worry about Hester, but I'm talking about in the future, get something going now on that yeah. on that's down the road. Well, with that having been said, obviously the other thing, too, is uh, for future, it still will be the connection of Hester. Let's uh, hypothetically go to the future that Hester's done already, right directly south of the, of the high school. I know that the railroad track already closed several stations. And one time we looked into it way back in the day, and they said, well, you can't. You can only have X amount of stations yes. open, but I see that several roads have been closed, and perhaps we could get something there. Again, that's in the future, yeah. and that would be another out into Main Street. I mean, Business 83, which is a lot bigger than Victoria Road. Which is on 23rd. Right, straight through 23rd. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that would help 26. us big time. Huh? Or 26 feet. Yeah. Let's go get something to the... Yeah. 23rd is going to be 26 feet. Yeah, that, that is difficult. Yeah, yeah, but, but back then, there were wooden to do a little wiggle room, but they threw out that we already have uh, maxed out on the, on the streets. But now I know that the one next to Veras, that 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 closed. Market. And isn't there another one? Ten, right. well, ten, ten, well, so you already have two that are frozen. Yeah. Yeah. We, need, we, we, we can try, but we found that in the past it's well, very difficult. But we're trying to return it. It's possible that they did can. We had to probably shut some uh, openings. I mean, that's what happened last time. And we did. Uh, and then we checked those things. Yeah, we, we closed our own. Yeah. Well, you know, we can. Yeah, this, uh, that we're meeting is great. I think we can uh, at least uh, maybe meet in the future again once we're mm -hmm. done with this project. We'll talk about it, you know, the other needs that you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, it's going to be an ongoing. Uh, along we have our process. process. Right. Yeah. We're okay. Yeah. Okay, trustees, did y'all see your pictures? Any any questions on it? Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also have a copy of the, the MOD, right? And that's been reviewed by Yes. Well, there's, there's two versions of, of the M1U. We only, we only yeah. circulated the one that Mr. Salinas and I voted on this morning. The, the one, one that I passed out is the most recent. It's, a good, it's the shorter one. Yeah. Okay. And you can run through it? <laughs> yes, I have a Mr. Yerena and uh, from the city, from the city standpoint, uh, I approve that as the form. Okay. okay. Any other questions or, or comments of the trustees? If not, on our part, at uh, Roman Rule 3, it is an action item, so I need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion is moved by Mr. Avila. <coughs> and asked to approve. <coughs> yes, to approve. Motion to approve. Mr. Avila. Second by who? Mr. Castillo Watts. Mr. Reina, how do you vote? In favor. Mr. Garcia, how do you vote? In favor. Mr. Valdez, how do you vote? I vote in favor, sir. Dr. Valdez, how do you vote? In favor. I, too, vote in favor. Motion carries. Okay, we have a city of Donna. Need a motion for item number one. Got a motion for Mr. Garza. Second, Mr. Lugo. Motion passes. Let's move to item number two. Discussion and possible action to award work authorization for proposed Hester Street project. Listen, Mayor Pro Pro Tem and Commissioners, uh, I would ask that you consider what you have before you work authorization number one. Uh, we have a list of engineers that is that is met uh, prior uh, by the city, and we would ask that you consider <coughs> awarding work authorization number one to Alpha Management Professionals uh, as the engineer for Hester. And they are proposing an estimated cost of $140,000. Um, we we do have some funding through the, uh, the street uh, uh, bond money uh, to, uh, to do to do to do this. Okay. 
of engineers we're talking about? Have you used them before? Uh, we have not used them before, but we did let them, uh, we did the RFQ for them. One of the new ones that came out. One of the new ones that came And then we, we do have a, uh, a representative from Office Management. Uh, Mr. Poindar. Did you score them or something? How did you select them? Well, basically, uh, we, uh, un, uh, we, we had a list of about 18. And we just went ahead and, and uh, approved all of them, mm -hmm. and then we select uh, the ones that we want to uh, work with. All of this. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Well, so pretty much all of, all of them uh, had to meet the qualifications. They had to uh, be certified by a professional uh, engineering board. So that's your recommendation? Yes, I, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Cody, why don't you know, like, do you have do the updated list of that? Uh, we, I don't, the, of, uh, of the engineers? Yes. We, we didn't include it, Mr. Mr. Bonsai. <coughs> but they've been working on, on parts already, right? Oh, yeah. They're going to be the ones who approved. Another one to Mr. Garza. No, sir. Second one Mr. Lugo. Motion passes. And then we move to the event, take the project, or? We can, if you're here, if you want to. So I don't know one of the first thing about I don't know number three, discussion and possible action on the inner local cooperation agreement between the County of Hidalgo and the City of Donna, Texas, concerning certain improvements to the Molana Loop extension from FM 493 to Victoria Road. Mayor Proctor and Commissioner, this uh, is an agreement uh, that we have that before you, and this, there is no financial obligation on behalf of the city. Basically, the county is working on designing the Nolana and they're going to be uh, moving forward to try to get funding on the NDO. Uh, but they did want us, want us uh, to let us know that they're working on it, and that, that is what we have uh, before you. There is no financial obligation. No, not a loop event is going to come from a cabin all the way to West. Okay. Yes, and it would be an REPJ from where? Uh, uh, to Victoria. I'm sorry, I'm from 193 to Victoria. Any questions? Any motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Lugo. Second. Motion by Mr. Garza. Motion passes. The city we have, we don't have anything in executive. Okay. So I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Mr. Garza. Second. Mr. Lugo. Name the adjourn for the city down. Trustees, so how we have, I need a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Made by Ms. Steve Ward, second by Dr. Valdez. Okay, I move. In favor. Mr. Valdez. In favor. Mr. Charlian. In favor. Two vote in favor. 1226. Meeting is adjourned. You are. That's where it is. It is 1240. 1243. I call this uh, workshop to order today, June the 18th, Tuesday. And again, we have all seven trustees and the superintendent here. No, no. no. Six. Six. Wow. Yes, he has to leave. He had to work. Okay, I was about to say I commend you all because all seven of us were here, but we were here for the pre previous special board meeting and now in the workshop. We do have six, so we still have a quorum. <laughs> Since we already uh, did our pledge and we signed we'll go on to room number two. It's the open forum. Dr. Do we have anyone signed up for that? No, sir. No one at this time. There's no one signed up for open forum at this time. Presentations. Okay, so now we'll go to room number three, the presentations. Uh, that's letter A.
2024-2025 budget workshop presentation. Dr. Lucas. Good afternoon, trustees. We're um, this afternoon bringing to you another <coughs> budget workshop. We've been working on the budgeting process actually for quite some time and want to keep our trustees in the loop as we continue to advance in that process. So I have with us this afternoon Mr. Cavazos that will be presenting our budget workshop number two. Um, you also have a hard copy of budget workshop number two as we dive into that content today. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we've been, as, as Dr. Romina said, we've been working on this budget for for some time already, we're you know we're trying to make it work, and this is not a final budget. This is just uh, you know bringing information to you right now, and then we're hoping to have another uh, budget presentation, hopefully uh, either the date next month or early August, uh, so we can be a little bit more accurate with with, uh, with the figures. So we're going to start off with the agenda. We got the vision and mission statement. We got the strategic plan. We got the enrollment and ADA trends. We got the funding elements of state aid. We got preliminary property values. Well for pupil, disaster pennies, budget pending update, the board discussion, and of course questions and comments. First of all, I'll start off with, with uh, Don ISD's mission statement and vision statement. Uh, the mission of Don ISD is to provide a rigorous and supportive learning environment with meaningful and relevant learning experiences that inspire creativity, character development, and critical thinking that ensures education and excellence for all students. And our vision is a, the vision of Don ISD is to be a bold district at the forefront of educating all, all students to be passionate, motivated leaders who will be a powerful force for positive change in our community, state, and nation. <coughs> of course, our, our Don ISD strategic plan, uh, goal one is focus on student success, two, focus on family and community engagement, on operational excellence, on employee organizational excellence, and of course, on, on financial stewardship. That's where we're at right now. And of course, Jerry will start with the, with the funding parameters. Thank you, Mr. Pettis. So for funding purposes, the main thing that we do look at, the driver behind it all is enrollment. Uh, so what we did is we gave you a couple years of historical data there going back to 2017. As we plan for our budget, the first thing that we do is we evaluate the current year. Okay, so our current year right now is 2024. Uh, at the time when we set the budget, this was the spring of 2023, uh, our PEAMS projection was 13,513. Okay. As of now, this is unofficial, we're looking at 13,131. That's a drop of about 3%, uh, a drop of uh, 382 students. Okay. But we actually lost, if you look back one year, school year 2023, you see the enrollment at 13,163. It's about 32 kids in reality. We keep this mechanism going because we always plan on the worst case scenario, right? at least for budget purposes. Uh, keeping that in mind, looking at 2025, we're also forecasting a 3% loss of students. Right? And we're, this is just us playing it safe. We don't want to overshoot it. Uh, that's uh, 368 kids. Three hundred and sixty-eight kids that we're going to lose. Yes, uh, that's our okay. attendance. Right, right. Our enrollment and ADA trend. It's also useful to look at the trend between enrollment and ADA. They should more or less always be in line. You have some good years and bad years where you see a spike in ADA. Let's say you have kids that um, go to a non-ecodis section of town, right? Um, a really strong faculty that brings in the kids. You do have little spikes here and there, but for more, more or less, you're going to see about the same trend. And that's what we see here going back to 2019. You see the drop in enrollment going down to the COVID years, and then kind of staggering out. And there you see our plot of our ADA at 11,119 for next year. In between there, it's also useful to look at your eco dis numbers, economically disadvantaged. They should always be in line. Typically, about 95% of your enrollment figures is, is where you're going to find your equipment for our area. So these are the numbers plotted back to 2019. Um, as I mentioned, in 2023, you see everything kind of staggered out. In 2023, 
enrollment increased 102. Uh, ADA also <coughs> increased 283. We're kind of rebounding from COVID at this point. Uh, and then our EcoDIS rebounding at 12,620. That's 96% in that year. Looking forward to this year, uh, we presume that 32 student loss for this year. 91 ADA will be the loss. And for EcoDIS, 166. That's 95%. For the coming school year, also in line with the trend, is we're going to lose the 368 kids that we talked about. ADA will go down 321. And then your EcoDIS will go down 349. Again, keeping in line with that 95%. Jerry, or uh, Coach, I was going to ask you, I know they used to do it, I don't know if they still do it, on the finance meetings in Region 1. Uh, during the budgeting process early on, they would give you a booklet that said budgeting tools. Budget. Would they still make that available? Because I, I think they give you, one of those pages shows you like all these students that we lost where they go. It's Have much nicer, it? it's much nicer now. It's actually a software. Oh, and you can go in there and run your own reports. Um, some of the information we kind of touched on in the last meeting with the highlights of the weavers going back and forth to Westaco, Idea Academy, and PSGA, more or less. We won't have uh, this year's leaders, of course, until next year. So we're kind of going off of 2023. Yes. Because we still haven't recovered from COVID. 13, the enrollment was 13,853, and we're projecting 12,000. So that's almost 1,000, right, in enrollment? Yes. From COVID, I'm talking about. Okay. Right. Do they still go out and, and try and uh, capture some of these kids before snapshot? Yes, ma'am. The campuses still go out? They also conduct surveys uh, to see if the kids are interested in coming to the district or going to continue on in the district. Our Queens Department uh, spearheads that section. And I have Ms. Modalo is here. Um, she can share just some updates about what her department's been doing. And we do have the, the information about what other school districts or school students have, have left us to. Okay, since we're in this topic right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up. Okay, I'm gonna paraphrase the quote that Mr. Calasso just said a while ago. Well, let me quote: "Really strong faculty that brings in the kids." Repeat it: "Really strong faculty that brings in the kids." Helps our ADA. Okay, so we this is basically the same question that all of us have right now, and. And when our business office also makes a quotation of knowing what the dilemma is, then this is something that uh, Dr. Lee, as we have discussed this, uh, please understand this is not like a written session. This is more of, we see what's going on. We see the numbers. We hear the comments. So what are we seriously going to do about this scenario? Because, you know, the fact that they go somewhere else, all the campuses in Nevada, for the most part, have open enrollment. Okay, so do we. But we need to step out of the zone and, and quit thinking that it's the norm. They're leaving us. What are we seriously doing to keep them, one, to bring them back, two, and more importantly, those that are enrolled in our district, those that are our students, what are we doing to make sure they come into school every day? That's your ADA. I know that uh, we were trying to push for the legislators to, uh, to change the, the, the funding for us to be funded based on enrollment and not ADA, but obviously that didn't go through. So here we are officially going to the 24 25 school year, and we're still seeing the numbers. Uh, you mentioned, I saw the numbers sir, uh, earlier, 2017, I think. We were 15,000, I tell people, that was our enrollment at one time. And now we're the lower end of 13,000, so it's gonna be two years, 12,000, you know, and, and here's the dilemma, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a straight up fact. The buildings we have are pretty much the same, with the exception that we, we shut down none in terms of student enrollment, uh, administration and so forth. The 13 schools that we have, the four new schools, the, the two high schools, uh, especially the new school, we saw a drastic drop in enrollment in the four buildings. And uh, high school, one of them had a big number too. Uh, so again, we're losing the, the enrollment. And so if the enrollment is down, now we really have to be pushing for the ADA, ADA because obviously that's, that's the support that the students have to come in here and get money. So um, I, I don't know, other trustees want to say that. I'm really just expressing what we know what the issue is, but, but I don't 
is a potential of 300 some kids, I went to the media and I said, we have to have an aggressive recruitment plan of action in place that we did. So if you can look at our, our types of efforts that we did, we used our social media, obviously, I went to our PR business, They're going to miss, and then who's going to suffer to have to bring them back up the kid and the teacher, and they're still with us, and we have to bring them back into study for those 10 days, okay? So if we do the five-day turnaround, then you're going to find out quicker. They're going to go and roll, they're going to grow. Right? They're going to just be, you know, kind of hanging out at home or whatever the case would be. But we're losing it. Yeah, that's actually the law. 10 days. 10 days. So we'll have to change. 
Uh, no, we can we can be more aggressive. Oh, we, can be be, oh, we can be we aggressive. We can be tighter. Yeah. We just can't yeah. be looser. We can't say 11 days. It's got to be 10 or less or so. Five in turn. And okay, then, but going back to the dilemma again, because I'm hearing this and I'm reading this this nice little fancy thing. But hold on, let me ask you one other question. On the I'm still with the levers. On the levers, what was the percentage that you all recruit, or did the campuses uh, bring brought back kids? So with the, with the recruitment effort, what I was telling uh, Dr. Dominguez is that I do have a detailed report of how many levers we had at the end of May. We had 143 levers, uh, or actually not levers, I should say dropouts. So obviously you all know that there's some people that students leave and they go back to their home country, or they go and go get homeschooled, or the judge orders them to go get a GED. It all depends, it's, it's a case by case scenario here. But we did have 143 that were not accounted for. So instead of waiting for us, for our, our arrows and our truancy officers to come back in July, we started looking for them in May. So out of that, we had 143 out of, in May. We found, that means we recovered, we located them, we, we found 113 students from May the 20th to June the 3rd. That was a quick turnaround, so we are currently pending once our AROs come back, which is our attendance recruitment officers. Once they come back, we have a 30 students that we got to find. Okay, so you say we, we who, who's we, Ms. Brown? It's the attendance recruitment officers, which I lead them, and the truancy officers. So these 113 are That's coming good. back? 113 have been recovered, meaning we've accounted for them. That, that, oh, they, they may be enrolled in another They're enrolled somewhere. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Well, not necessarily they're they're that they're coming back to us. Yeah. So 30 or? 30, we're still pending. Yeah, there was 30, those 113 are officially enrolled somewhere else so that Don Isley doesn't get a hit as a drop. Right, yes. Okay, so 30 are pending. 30. Okay, now. What, what campuses are those? Yeah. I don't know what campuses, but usually when we have our dropouts, we focus on our secondary campuses which is our middle schools and high schools. But you don't but know, for, I mean, it could be a particular school, maybe? That would be- We, we can mean, get I, the data, we just didn't bring it today. Yeah, I, and I agree with Dr. Valdez. Can, can we have, and again, I don't want to be thinking, this is a workshop, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bear with us, because we're talking. <laughs> so, for the betterment. For you. Yeah, because, because at the end of the day, I don't think we're trying to no, we, be dictators or to be governors and all that. We're just concerned with our enrollment. Yeah, I think yeah. it really is the time yeah. right now to say, okay, we've been hearing this, look at the numbers, it's going down, but yeah. we, we can't just be whistling Dixie all the time because we're going down. Mr. Perez, how much is, uh, what's the funding per kid that we get? How much money? 8200 8200 $8, okay. 8200 per kid, all right. And that's just in the state, right? And then we have all the others. All right, so this is what I'm going back on. Okay, because we, we have two different animals here. The animal of that we're losing them, uh, enrolling, they're going somewhere else. And then the animal that those that are enrolled, they're not coming to school. Okay, and this, Dr. Dominguez and your team, uh, because we have a good team, really need to think out of the box and come in. And the way I say this is kind of like what Dr. Dominguez was saying about the campuses. You look at a campus, you zoom in on your administration, you zoom in on all the, all the people who are not teaching, and then you zoom into the classroom, then you zoom into the class rosters, then you zoom into the kid, and you start drilling. So it's really easy if you have a system in place. But if we don't have a system in place, we're just hitting hit and miss, hit and miss, because then keep in mind, uh, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm focusing more on the, on the secondary, since you mentioned that a while ago, we need to also piggyback on and, and take advantage of all the extracurricular sponsors, the coaches, uh, the, 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 the band, uh, you know, all those individuals that get a stipend for whatever extracurricular activity they help us with, then that should also be part of their, their need because the kids need to be in school is they're going to compete with them in the afternoon. That is actually a UAL. Mm -hmm. Some of them just show up half a day and then they'll come up the rest of the week. So be thinking out of the box of where you hold them accountable as well, too. In other words, the teacher, the coach, all of us. Because we need that one kid to be here. I mean, 95%, hey, that's, yeah, we, we need to be thinking out of the box. And yes, I know it's tough, but in those little elementaries, the younger schools, I mean. They should not be below 98. Exactly. I agree. Not, not so we're getting to loosey goosey at this for lack of better words. And I, and I think what I want to add to Fernando, I think this is really good at the district level, what we're doing, but what are the campuses doing? 
because the campuses are key, they're in Stroma. Yeah, that's where, that's where the... And I don't know what the campuses are doing or not doing. Okay, you said we lost 30, we have 30, right? Right. And then when I asked you about the uh, neighboring district, you said they're all losing. Correct. So how many did we gain? We're gaining very little. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of like we lose, let's say, 150, mm -hmm. but we only gain okay, you 100. And, so the turnaround is... We're not gaining. It's not a large amount. And I guess what we want, a number. Like, okay, we're for example, we lost 150, we gained 50, so what is, did we lose or gain? So we actually lost 32 students this 32 year. 32 students 32 is students loss. this year is the loss um, from where we were last year. Correct. Oh, okay. So, okay, so but it, it fluctuates. Including the ones, the three or four that you're saying we got back right. from another district. Yes. Okay, but, but that's misleading, though. That's misleading. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Cowboys, so, Cowboys. Here, here's what we have to look at. That's why I'd like to see if we can put up, put up the enrollment on the district wide, the last day of school, the enrollment, or you can say May 1st, it doesn't matter. And that's where you're going to see every single campus, previous year and current year, total number of students they had and whether they gained or they lost. That's a black and white. And that way, all of us get an idea of what, what we're talking about. Because in some cases, you gain some. In some cases, yeah, you're lost. Just with mobility, we see right. a lot of fluctuation. From day to day, it changes. Right, I agree. But but you're putting all the you're putting all the yeah. baskets in, cool. in one and you come yeah, out with 32. The but when you start 30, zooming what, in, 32 was the annual loss from where we were. Yeah. About. But when you start zooming into the actual yeah, campus true. and the grade level, I mean, the, those campuses need to take ownership on that. And, and that's what I'm referring to because uh, you'll you'll see some campuses that gained over 100 kids. And we know, okay, some of them because of the hits or what have you. But then you see some campuses that lost 60 kids. Okay, well, what's their story? Yeah, exactly. And the grade level. Uh, those are the type of things that we're referring to because we just can't, uh, I mean, you know, the legislation, they're not, they're not giving us the money, the schools, the public schools that we want. And, and, and here we go, open up the school year again, and yes, everybody's going with deficit budgets. And so can so but we got, you, you can do May the, May the 1st if you have to. May 15th, doesn't matter. And those 32, you have a breakdown of where they went to? Yes. So like while Dr. Dominguez like is looking that. for our enrollment uh, report, the, we also what we also did this year is that we actually went into our campuses and we surveyed our little ones, our students that are currently enrolled, and we asked them. And I know it was kind of, and our teachers thank our teachers for, for kind of going off with what we were wanting our little ones to answer. We were asking our little ones if they had any little brother or sister living at home under the age of four. So some of them said yes, and then some of them said, no, oh, I, you know, I don't know. But we got 480 leads. That means that based off of that answer that child gave us, that was a direct home visit, enroll with us, come to Donna, those type of deals. So out of that, we have 36 new students that we, I don't think we would have known if we would have gotten that survey. Do May 15th. That's all right, that's okay. And then we have 83 uh, cases that we couldn't get a hold of them, so we actually went out there, did, conducted a home visit, left the flyer, and we were assisting them to register. A lot of the parents, what happens is that they don't know the online process, so that's why we're there. So our AROs are out there with iPads, assisting them to register. So we did a lot of that as well. Well, that they be up Really, I can't see. Bigger, 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't see it either. It's not, something's not right. Hold on. Touch. Touch, it's not a touch. screen. It's a touch screen. No, it's touch screen. Oops, did you record that? I what? Yeah, okay. Tell us what those numbers are. Yeah, okay. Something's wrong. Just give me one second. The report itself is not Where are your glasses? No, it's going to read this. Es que nosotros se me quedaron en la casa de verdad. I like the other one. 
Yes. Oh, he left him. Oh, yeah. He did. Expensive ones. So rough story. That is your shirt. He is blind. Lighter than you? Yeah. They're light, but... Okay, what are you doing, Ms. D? Well, let me continue going while Dr. Dominguez, okay. because there is a lot of recruitment efforts that we did. We also used our transportation buses. I've worked with Mr. Ortiz, letting him know that we wanted buses to be out there to advertise our enrollment and, and registering our kids. That type of stuff. I think we had our buses parked out there from February all the way to May, I believe. Then we had our uh, marquees advertising. So I reached out to the city of Donna. Hey, please have our Donna ISD now enrolling type of deal. So Joey, I worked with Joey. He helped me a lot on advertising our registration. We also reached out to our Head Start families as well. You guys know that we have a collaboration with Head Start. So our pre-K-4 students, they have an option to come to Donna. They don't have to necessarily come to Donna. But what we did is we actually went out there uh, and we reached out to all our pre-K-4 students, families, and we let them know that KG is now an option for them. So we kind of let them know what campus they're assigned to. So we also did that. And the summary's in the bottom. Joey, okay. I mean, uh, Javi, I think he left his phone too. Mr. Mr. Exactly. Is your phone? Thank you. 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 You can get it, you can hit May 15th. I did hit May 15th. I you left your puppy. Yeah. Just don't tell me to bark like a dog. Fernando, <laughs> what are you doing on the floor? I think it's just getting a name tag. Just don't tell me to bark like a dog. <laughs> no, we also have a lot of parents, a lot of teachers that have their kids in different schools at Vanguard. That's a good point. Uh, that's a good point. If, they're, if they're from out of town, then they have a home there. I know. Okay, we have the report up in the Mr. Castillo. What day is that? The last day of school. So we have our enrolled by uh, campus here, and you can see the previous year enrollment. See that? I want to see that close by home. So if you see in Ochoa, you have the enrolled of this year, we had 572, but the prior year, the previous year, we had 309, uh, 63. So that was a gain for Ochoa, it was 209 students, but again, we have a collaboration with Head Start. So right, the majority okay, so of those kids are- It's good that you're doing that because now everybody here can see, why do they have a plus? Well, the answer is because they, are the, they have the Head Start number that we didn't have before. Then you go to Guzman, the next one. Right. Uh, at Guzman, last uh, this year we are at 340. Last year we were at 359. And we lost of 19 students. And then see, we those have 19. Seen. That would be a circle. And this is what I talk about when we say, "Why are you so far?" But you zoom in to that now. When, when you look at that in comparison to the others, well, Guzman is Guzman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. That's the biggest. On this one, Casa is 287, and you sent an assistant principal. It's actually projected to go higher this year because the numbers have gone up at Rivas every year. 
But even so, it still wouldn't be over. Yeah. Okay. So it's, right now, we're looking at possibly, I think it was 304 with returning students, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah. They're, they're sharing some other staff at this point, too. Too large. Too large. Too large. Too large. So, I also wanted to share that we don't, when we're looking for our leavers, we're not only focusing our, on our secondaries. We actually look for everybody. Yeah, that's so we should be. that includes elementary, so it doesn't folks. matter what age the, the, the student is, we go out there and look for them and recruit them back. Okay, so it's Stanky, you have Stanky, 40 kids less. Stanky, they did lose 40 students. Okay, see, stop, time out, time out. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to get our trustees exactly. to understand. Exactly. I don't hear all these other because what and who met with that campus principal and had that sat down and say, show me face to face, where did these 19 kids go? And she said, well, they went, so no, 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 where did they go? Evidence. And why did they leave? Did they relocate? Or they said, well, they have open enrollment and I want to send my kids over there. Because if they have open enrollment and they still reside in Donna Z, that's the number one question we should, we should ask. Do you reside in Donna Z? Yes. Okay, then why did you take them over there? So we have to do some extra Recruiting. So you see there's 40 from that campus, uh, that was thank you, right? Yes, Salinas gained 59. We, we also did some rezoning at elementary that accounts for some That's of the movement um, last spring. So we we moved some kids around from Stanky, Ochoa, and then also okay, well, well, the Munoz and Adama and, area. And, oh, and, and actually... It's not going to be that much of an impact, I can assure you, because again, those, you have your 19, your 40, and Salinas. They're not, you didn't ship them all the way to Salinas, did you? No. Because so Salinas, gained, Salinas gained 59. And Salinas also added Head Start. Okay, so there's your answer, Head Start. And I think based on the numbers and based on what Ms. Morado is telling us, I think the district is doing a lot to recruit. I think it's the campuses exactly, that are. Exactly, right? so the boots well, in the ground. Is what I'm talking about. So now you go to your little schools, okay? Because that, that to me is something that so uh, our, all our middle schools did lose. Yeah, now isn't that like something that everybody should be saying, wow, what's happening? Can Fernando add more? When I'm looking at this one, at this district attendance, really, this one that we got here, out of all the elementary schools, only two would warrant an assistant principal. None of the other. Now go, go back to your middle schools. Look at, read, just read the numbers. So, what the was this year? AP Solis was at 639. Last year they were at 686. They lost a 47 yeah, students. That's, that's cool. uh, so I said that we had 596 last year. I'm mean, sorry, this year. Uh, last year we had 663, a loss of 67 students. So, Ms. Morado, with every family, we do keep a tracker, correct? Where we reach out all of our families that have left um, correct we actually uh what did we do this year we introduced that to our campuses where we wanted to know what it was a quick survey where they can scan a qr code and we wanted to know where why our families were using us was it because it was poor customer service they did not like their teacher we didn't offer after school program what why are they using this to go somewhere else okay so do you have that data Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting because it's a workshop, all right, so we don't have a particular chance. But everything y'all are saying, keep in mind, all of you have degrees, doctorates and masters and all that. Some of these parents don't have that. You mentioned QR. You mentioned we said it's a survey. You mentioned social media. Some of them don't have all this. So like those 47 kids, 47 kids, they need to be actually go to their house, una platica. Uh, find out what's going on because seriously, don't get me wrong. Right. I'm not trying to be condescending, but QR codes and that's not going to the conference. And even then, some of our individuals and, and colleagues they don't know how to use those things uh, up, up at the conferences because they're being so modernized. Yeah. So can you imagine the parents Correct. going back to keeping it very simple and very fundamental? Those 47 kiddos from AP Solis, they should have a, a, a documented record of the picture of the kiddo, when they went to go visit, who did they sit with, mom and dad, or that way, little tío for all 47. Same thing with the 67 from South Center, and then the 40 from uh, Veterans, and the 34. And here's an eye-opener. I don't know if y'all have seen this, but tell me how many, how many students does uh, Munoz have? Munoz has 703 students. Can you believe that three of the middle schools are less than one elementary? And that should not be, that should not be accepted. Uh -uh. That's unacceptable. That's a very good With point. regard to, here we have the elementary, and actually, you have others that are a little close. What's uh, where's Garza? 
Garza is a... 608. 608. Yeah, 600. You see? Look at that. And these are elementary. When they should, the ratio should actually be much smaller. And I mean, who for thought? It's just that you combine the four schools. What, what is that number? The four schools that take middle schools. 47, 57, 40, and 34. How many of that that we lost at the middle school? And I know that this is part of the workshop, but guys, this is right here. We don't have these things. There's no money. No, and and, and I'm, like I was telling you, the elementary, really, to qualify for an assistant principal, you should have over 600 students. We only have two elementaries with that number. So we really shouldn't have a system. What was your number? 188. 188, just in the middle school. And you know, give or take, it could be five. Five year, five year. Yes. But we have 186. And so how, how do you all feel? Do you feel the pressure? Like, oh, my God. Definitely. No, we feel the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. We, we, need to, we need to see it up there. Because the previous year, and then you go down. Now go down to the two high schools. That's another one that's like should be much much easier to, to, to look into. Seventy seven from one. At Donna, from at Donna High School, we had nineteen seventy seven this year, and last year we had two thousand and seventeen. They lost a forty. So they lost forty, and North lost seventy seven. Seventy seven, yeah. Damn. You know, that's, that's a large number. That's a lot. So. No, I, so I, can... I agree with Fernando. I think the problem for this ADA or attendance is not necessarily at the district level. It's the individual campuses. Go to the ground. Yeah. We want to know exactly what are those campuses, what do they have in place that is not. Or they obviously don't. Okay. I'm going to say something publicly that may be offensive to some people, but I'm going to be very objective. I know that we have the right as a parent or as a community member to send your children anywhere you want to send them, uh, especially uh, with the open room and so forth. But when we have employees in the district who have been employed in our district for several years, but yet they take their, their kids to another school, a charter school particularly, or any of those charter schools, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know it's, it's, it's a personal choice, but I would really, like to have seen that give the community that's hiring you to be in a district an opportunity because I guarantee you our district can do anything that any other school district can do just as good or better Absolutely. and that 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 is something that I really again I don't mean to, to sound rude or disrespectful to those but to, to please consider that as a district if you're employed by the district but yet you take your son or your daughter somewhere else Seriously, what, what, what message is that? And sit down, come sit down with the superintendent and discuss, well, listen, I would bring them here, yes, this, 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 but if you haven't even done so, then what are we really doing? It really is just something that needs to be made clear because we are in, a, we are in an era where it doesn't look good for public schools. It doesn't look good for public schools. And, and these charter schools are getting all the funding and eventually they might get that. And so what are we gonna end up doing? We're gonna, start having to, to cut back on on staff members simply because the enrollment is not here and I don't know. So uh, it's just, it really is a, it really is a something to, to ponder that the employees, regardless of where, what level, central office or campus level or auxiliary, and they have their kids enrolled somewhere else other than Don ISD. It's something to be really think about. Think and then some of these schools whose enrollment continues to be very low, we need to reconsider closing some of them, not this coming year, of course, but for the following year. I, I definitely think that we're going to have to look at either some sort of innovative processes or really looking at keeping some of the smaller sites open the way that they currently are because it, it is, it, it's a cost all the way around when you have schools that have seats to accommodate all of the students yeah. um, and we're operating multiple small sites. So we do need to do a detailed study and evaluate moving forward um, what the needs of the district will be. Well, Gossett is, is the lowest in the world right now. Yeah, Gossett is the lowest in the world. But like, like so, uh, going back to the numbers again in the elementary, Ms. Uh, Al Munoz, are all those kiddos, are all those kiddos that are attending Munoz, are they actually zoned to that area or are we getting them bus somewhere? 
Are some we talking about overflows? Some of them are overflows for whom y'all, so I don't know. I think I gave Dr. Dominguez the yeah, overflow count. Where are they going to? I mean, or it may be where grade level was full at another campus, so we didn't have a seat for them when they came in to register or enroll. So we have overflows <coughs> uh, at a lot of campuses, actually, um, at the elementary level, because the grade level may get full for a particular um, student or cohort. Uh, I think when y'all wasn't. I remember the yeah, numbers. I don't remember the number for Munoz. Well, regardless, 703. And I'm looking more. Entry. And I'm looking more at staffing. I'm just using the first campus as an example, or mm -hmm. one campus. Like based on this particular campus, they should not have any more than 17 teachers. I'd like to know how many there really are, because that when you start doing that, that's when you start. Oh shoot, man, we're overstaffed, overstaffed, overstaffed. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. So going back to the report, we do have a lot of kids that have left us, but rest assured that we are doing our recruitment efforts the best that we can. Again, we were very, very aggressive this year, and I'm hoping that our recruitment efforts this year is going to show our numbers for next year. I'm really, really hoping that this really helped us out this year. But again, we did start very, very early. We started in January, and we didn't end until June the 3rd, because our air, my arrows are, obviously that was their last day, uh, and they don't return until July the 15th, so we'll continue our efforts then. And I will follow up with our campuses in terms of detail plans on exit interviews <coughs> and ADA, so we'll, we'll get that information yeah. to, to the the trustees as well. Um, and then at the staffing information that yes, for Dr. Valdez, I do have that, the allocations by campus. Okay. So I'm happy to provide that to you. Yeah, because that'll help you kind of like get mm -hmm. the whole picture also for what yeah. we need to do. This report that you gave us, uh, the, 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 not the one that you're reading, but the other one, it says uh, district attendance office. Correct. Okay. What are those? negative numbers mean at the very bottom. For example, I'm looking at Donna High and Donna North side by side, and they give you the breakdown of students, but at the very bottom it says 137, the other 77. Is it because they're different dates, that the numbers aren't matching? That, that's quite possible, because those numbers change, actually. Okay, Donna North pages. is correct still, and Donna High is at well, what is and 40 here. here. The bottom, the well, most above the red is 23, and then for what's in red is the. Yeah, no, no, I see. It's just that I'm comparing, but the dates are different. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Donna North State, the same, they lost 77, and Donna High had 37, where we are, and this one is 40. Three, 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 three. And so just to, to keep in mind that although the, the number says like minus 19, minus 40, that, that's actually not unique students because we have students coming in and out on a daily basis. So a campus could see hundreds of withdrawals, but also hundreds of entries. So we we would go then and look student by student. That's just their overall net losses at the end of the school year. What is Skyward? You're, you're the guru at Skyward? I am. What are they going to bring to the table to help out in matters uh, on, well, on, the, on the attendance for the students. What Skyward is offering is that they offer a lot of our dashboards. So instead of our, us writing reports on a daily basis, they can see it live. So if a student withdraws, then that principal's dashboard is an, it's an immediate change. They don't have to be constantly be running and rerunning reports on a daily basis. Uh, or we gain students. So we can also monitor our leavers through Skyward. So it's going to be a game changer, in my opinion. And, and our campuses are super excited. So it's, now it's all based off of training. We have to what, train what everybody. Of, uh, no, I, I understand. What about in terms of now I can safely say, say that you could probably put this to use the cell phone messages? Parents do have cell phones. We, we've actually been doing that this year. Um, that was another introduction that we did that we never had. So as soon as a student was absent this year, this school year, a message was immediately sent out to that family. And how do you know that it was there? You know, it could be a wrong number, so I guess there's, there's a lot of things into that. So what Blackboard does is they give us a report of somebody that didn't answer. So what? 
for the automatic call out. Yeah. So, <laughs> what else is it? Well, it'll come in and report back if somebody didn't answer or so if it was an incorrect phone number, it gave us a report, and then I would release the, that report to our campuses to make sure I need you to contact no this problem. parent, and I need an active phone number. Okay, this is what I was saying. You're on target again, but how do you get evidence from that campus, from that principal, from that teacher, from that, that this is what I did with the information I gave you? Because it looks real pretty, because you're doing your job, as Dr. Elizabeth mentioned ago. How do we know, or how do you know, that Whatever you send out to them, it was addressed. You know what I'm saying? All right. We don't, okay. right? See? But all that hard work you're doing behind the scenes, okay. that's what's missing for Then at home, I have to call check on it. What is that saying? That if, if something is not supervised, it becomes optional? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's something about it. <laughs> if it's not monitored, it's like it. If it's not monitored, it becomes optional. And then some of it. Okay, but here's what I'm saying. In other words, Guys, we've got to change the game. We okay. have to change the game because everything you're doing, bless your heart, is by now because the, the campus, the teacher, the administration, the, they're not getting to the parents. And actually, Ms. Mora, 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 how can I say, like a competition among well, our say, campuses. Uh, so, um, and I did have principals call me because it, it was released every Friday. So if I didn't release it at two o'clock, guess what, I had principals call me because the rivalry between campus to campus because they wanted to be number one. So we did introduce that. Again, we, we did a lot this year that hadn't been done, but it, it just kind of... Okay, you did that, but did you say the goal is 98%? Correct. Did you accept, okay. We actually, we looked at all our data in August, and I met with all the campuses, the clerks, the attendance clerks, and let them know that their goal was to be at 90. And I believe we went 2% higher than last year. I wish I was able to share that with you guys. Yeah, I was going to ask you, can you? Because you're going to the one, just push the button. Okay. Right, sure and we'd like to see because the schools are shut down already. To see how the elementary is. It, it should be nice. That's schools. one of the reports that I sent to you um, in the the board updates. So right. the PEMS department does that weekly tracking of ADA. Mm -hmm. um, we have improved this year. It just hasn't gotten back to to where it really needs to be at this point. Um, yeah, but show is the one that we're. And Fernando, what do you typically hit at the high schools? Because I'm not too familiar. Well, what should not, be a reasonable. If, if you get 93, is good. Really? Yeah, 93? 93 yeah. are good. And was it in middle school coming? No, middle school should be like 95. 95? Yeah. But so shooting for a 95 at a high school, that's a very attainable yeah. goal. they got to bust their butt to do it. But yeah, it, And I know is, that Lenore was doing a lot because I get the notification from Class Dojo and they would post, you know, that they were third in a lot of place times or they were second in a lot of times. She was shooting for first. And they would send out the notices to the parents because I would get it. So I know that one campus. I, don't know I, I know that campuses put forth a lot of efforts. I mean, do. that what's missing is being very strategic on the follow-up. And so that's mm -hmm. something that, that certainly I will make sure that we're putting in place is the, the routine follow-up on leavers, enrollment and exit interviews. Um, those customer service pieces, just talking to, to families as they get ready to withdraw can make a huge difference. And so, <laughs> is that it as well? Yes. yes. That's so, the bottom. It'll be so the bottom did, one, right? Explain it to us. So what I did is I actually compared two years. So what you see in the yellow is what our ADA was last year at 85 versus uh, 86 where we ended. So my goal was that if you can go up at least 2% every year, I put our Donna High School at 86 and their goal for this year was 88. Now mind you, our high schools are really, really tough on, on even getting 90% on a daily basis. So 88, I, again, I didn't want to overwhelm our campuses to see if they can reach 88. And they did. Uh, we have been us, but they did. Oh, our, 
Our, our middle schools, again, they were at our low 90s. Last year they were at 91, and this year I put a goal of 93%. And again, it all varies on the campus because we were basing it off of what we okay, had last year. So again, we did 2% in every campus, which was an attainable goal for them. <coughs> again, we did not want to over that, overwhelm them, but this is my goal setting for attendance. Uh, it needs to be a lot higher. Yeah. The higher, it, the it higher does. Level. But, but See that the elementary is normally is not over this. Elementary much should be at 98. 98. 98. And I will share that this is, high schools are in it's almost. not unique to Donna ISD. School districts are still recovering. Don't really care about the schools. I understand, but attendance across the state is different. So we're we're trying to recover with what ADA was before COVID to now, and absenteeism or parents keeping kids home happens a lot more frequently now than it did before. Where it would be like send your kid to school until 10 a.m. even if they're not feeling well. Um, things are a little different in terms of that recovery. This year is looking a lot better, and I anticipate next year we'll be really getting back to those higher thresholds. Just because for the record, we graduated in 2024. No more COVID. Those kids are graduating. And, and I guess gone. maybe, and I, and, I, and I see your point, Dr. Dominguez, and I agree with you, but I'm also I'm also recognizing that 98% is not is attainable. It is, but it's going to take a lot of work at the campus levels, but they can't get there. And I've always believed if you want 98%, you tell them to go for 100, and they'll give you 98. Because if you tell them just two points, then ah, just two points, and I'm okay. So raise your like expectations of what you want them to be. So I wanted to share with you guys this morning. Getting an audience participation over here. <laughs> I was going to share the s'more of uh, how we can show them. And this was on a weekly basis, so it was potato really challenging. Right now? What do you do for your attendance, if you don't mind me asking? What are some things that you do? Because Great you, 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 in our classroom? Yeah. 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 We, we motivate them. I think they come in, they get a treat, we eat, for a Like at our at the end of the at the week, uh, they get an extra 15 minutes of recess. Oh, okay. That's great. Exercise. That's great. Yeah, see, but individually, all at the campus, individual teachers are also pushing, too. Oh, so oh, that's oh, what yeah. it takes. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Oh, my goodness. So this is our score. I do this on a weekly basis, just so we have good communication with everybody, all our district leaders assistant superintendents, Dr. Dominguez, all our campuses. Uh, they're the ones that see this. This is where we kind of communicate what's due for our teams, uh, making sure that they know that when we're out of the office and if they're trying to get in contact with us, we're not in the office because I do mention to them. But this is the one that we really wanted to let you guys know that we did do the attendance challenge year round. So again, these were, I know that I had Ms. Hinojosa from Salinas Elementary called me like, what is Casa is doing that they're always getting first place? Well, I'm going to so, say, Casa is only has 273 students. Correct. So, so it is a smaller campus. So obviously, they're going to get first place a lot of the times. The rivalry here was AP Solis in Salceda. They were always, and I feel these all the middle schools had like, they were wanting for this report to come out. So again, this was something that I introduced this year. And, and you can see Donna Nora, that 78% of the week. Hey, Ms. Morales, I know you're mentioning, to, and it's great, because you know human beings, we just love to win all the time. But you address that to the campus. What are the campus principals doing with their teachers? In other words, uh, Ms. Calderon, she should be winning all the time at 98. How do they get them to, to get their kids in? And the follow-up question is this. For the elementaries, what is considered present? At 10 a.m. or what? Correct. If they are in the official attendance period at the time, they okay. are counted present, meaning our, we get points or we'll our get percentage goes right. Okay, so, do, so do, do the teachers know that? So yes. they can express yes. to the parents? Yes. And I'm going to go pick up my kid right now. No, no, no. Listen, 
We do stress that yes. to set their appointments after well, school. you do, but on the campuses yeah. do we get See, that's, again, that's what I'm saying is because, I mean, you all have all the degrees. Yeah, but, but you don't want them to, to really, really stress, pick them up after 10, because then a lot of them are going to leave. Well, no, no, if it's yeah, really a know, true doctor for you to show you, you not show it still counts as a worse than what we have now when right. it's the day before. It counts as ADA 1. Exactly. Boom. That's all we need. Okay. The so ADA is what we need, yeah. The total dia, dos horas is better than that. Right. Mm -hmm. I hope you're taking notes, but I'll be taking notes. I am taking lots of notes here. Lots of notes here. You're doing all the work. We're going to go off of it. And our campuses are engaged in a lot of processes around attendance and enrollment. I know campuses are doing a variety of things. Teachers are, I know they are. So I, I'm at the schools. So I can tell you that there's a lot of incentives, there's activities that they're doing to get kids there. Um, we also have on the negative end families that are going to, to court and having to, to address serious attendance or chronic issues. Um, there's the evidence. Make it bigger. Uh, 30%. Oops. No. Okay, you just go to that slide. That. Was that shown to all the campus principals before they left? It uh, is shown group? at the beginning of every year, August. No, but at the end, this, this is what you ended up with. Look, I didn't even go to Windsor. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's factual. That's data. We're not making it yeah. up. We're not making it up. Rivas went down? Yeah, From the previous year? No, Rivas went down from the previous year. Well, but that's right my there. point, is they need to see it. What's, what's going on. Yeah. So when you say that they're doing all these things, they're just all too low. Okay, obviously something not working because they're all too too low. I was, I was not aware that they were. Yeah, no, I was old. totally surprised with the elementary because that's yeah. more like high school already. But then look at the high school's 80s. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And especially in the elementaries because you've got, I mean, if you've got 200 and something kids and five of them are absent, you should be able to get those kids back in fast. ASAP. Five kids. You need to leave. 10 o'clock, you can leave, but I need you in the campus right now. What's the time for the middle school? And, and we do have attendance helpers at every campus where they make calls. I know we have the automated calls, but they do make contact as soon as we get the report from first period. They start making calls at 8, uh, 8.30. Yeah, you know, but as a, as a campus principal, those were not very effective. To me, well, I think what was most effective is the, the teachers getting on the phone and getting the kids in, and along with the principal supporting them if the parents didn't answer. That's what was effective. Because sometimes they get tired of all those calls every day, every day, every day, and they don't even. But if it's the teacher or the principal, they'll be more receptive. Are we still departmentalizing so, at what grade level? No. <clears throat> the elementaries. It, it depends Who's on the campus. It's usually. Um, Pre-K through second is self-contained. After that, we'll all be all personalized. Yeah. Okay, so when you say self-contained, we're talking 22 kids, maybe 24. Yeah, exactly. And, and you've got three or four apps you can get a hold of them. Like teachers. Maybe. But it just depends on the conference period too. If the conference period, most, not of, the most of our teachers use apps like Class Dojo, yeah. and I, I mean, I feel confident that the majority of people are reaching out, guys. And I, I don't want to to mitigate or say that teachers and administrators are not making a lot of effort around this. I think everybody is taking it very seriously. We want students in class. Obviously, they're going to be better prepared academically. Mm -hmm. We're we're seeing some challenges, and I think we do need to get more systematic. So those are some things that I certainly will, will circle back with the teams on. But I know that teachers send a message typically, or they're reaching out to, to families to try to get students in. Um, I, I think some other data that I would probably want our team to pull and share is we have some families that are chronically absent, that start to, to really impact or affect um, those attendance rates. and so. Uh, we're, we're going to have to do some different things, and I, I think that's something we'll circle back with our campuses because what used to work isn't working in many cases right now. Okay, so you hit uh, another so point there. And so the idea of just incentives, that phone call, and I need you here till 10, it's not working the same way it did before COVID. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I can tell you that from experience, having been at the school, yes, we, we can get very, up front with families, but 
parents are keeping children home more frequently than they did in the past. Okay, so you said something about parents being chronic ready. All right, so chronic means that they're consistently back to back to back absent. So when they do you kick in the children's seat? 15 or, or more absences. Oh, and but you're not going to wait till then. No, we so, don't. So no. what is the plan that you all have for children's seat then? We're going to wait till the person we, we don't. violates the law. So we, we also don't get a lot of support from the court systems anymore. I'll be very, we they're, we take them, we go through the process, and they encourage families to come to school. All they do is give us left in the hand. So it's, it's very <coughs> different consequences than what it was previously. Do you have a slide on that, Jessica? I'm looking for it. Well, I'm sorry that all those things are happening, but again, look good. No, I know. We just need to we need to think out of the box and come up with some different solutions, certainly, for, for how to address these areas um, and be strategic in, in how we're approaching that. And I think you're right, Dr. Dominguez, because you're you're talking about everything that the campuses are doing, but but the but the data is telling us it's not right. being effective. Mm -hmm. So we need to so change. So we need to look at what can we do differently yeah, to, to so what we also did this year is that we did create a truancy flow chart. So depending on how many three, like if they had a three unexcused absences, we immediately, the intervention happened faster instead of waiting to the five unexcused eyes uh, or under line. But we did have, we introduced that this year. I don't think we've ever had a truancy a flow chart of some sort. So the interventions happen just a lot faster. I'm trying to log in, but it doesn't, whatever reason it doesn't work. They've had those shorts in the past, but obviously it all comes down to, is it, is it gonna be followed through and monitored? Yeah, and maybe the attendance helpers that make the phone calls, maybe those positions need to be redefined and what they need to do maybe differently. Maybe there's something different that they could do. So this is the one that I introduced to them this year where I explained to them exactly who's taking care of what. Uh, I was very detailed with the attendance helpers, what they're doing. They're going to contact them via phone. The attendance helpers will make sure they document, you know, because there's some paperwork that they have to do. Uh, and then we have to print out the first warning letter, which we use our hands on. And then, so it, it was very, very detailed as the third and excuse, the sixth and excuse, the ninth and excuse, and the tenth plus and excuse. Okay, Ms. Morales, so again, the question goes, how do you know that they're doing it? Do you get? They submit paperwork and documentation. Yes. So, you have that so the campus? paperwork is submitted to us on a weekly basis. So, yes. I don't have any other questions or comments. Trustees, anybody else? And then I know we, no, we spent a lot of time on that. Because, because, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big circle, man. Yeah, big, circle, because big that circle. affects our budget. Yeah, I because guess. that's that's exactly what we spent that under. And, and and again, mind you, that this is an individual. What's your title, Mr. Crossens? Finance Director. Finance Director at Central Office of Donna Independent School District. I made a paraphrase or quote it. Really strong faculty that brings in the kids. I like that. So that just means that it's still at the campuses. Mm -hmm. They don't bring them in, they're no money. Right. And let's face it, it is what it is. If people say, oh, you just don't want to be in school because they want money. Yes. In addition to the education, so in, ed in addition to the law that you have to be in school. Yes. But the answer is yes. I do have just one comment, and I, not a comment, but maybe a request. Oh. I know that our when we're purchasing attendance incentives for our students, our budget is only $500 for the year. For, for all our elementary, for all our campuses. So maybe we can just up a little bit, Jerry. Uh, just a tad bit so we can buy more incentives for our kiddos. Just a request, food to thought. The schools. The schools. The incentives come from the schools. That's what they get. That's what they get. The campuses? Yes. Yes, but they have their own budget. They can work it out from their own budget. Hey, Ms. Morales, uh, I, I know that so I said it earlier, but I don't know if you have it integrated into the your action plan. Right. Maybe there's some house 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 secondaries for their kids get the extracurricular uh, coaches, you know, whoever it's getting stipend, to be held accountable as well okay. for the kids being in school. I mean, it, it just, we need everybody's help. I'm going to make something clear. We cannot increase our budget more. Can't. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Any other so questions? 
No, thank you so much, Ms. Wanell. You're welcome. If you wouldn't mind pulling back up the budget presentation, please. Yes. yes. It's, it's, okay. it's okay. I actually have a few figure reading in my office actually. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Okay, sure. So our next slide is uh, dealing with major special uh, populations. These are our programs. So what we've done is we gave you a couple years of data here. And it's just comparing how 2023 ended, of course, that's audited. So for our bilingual program, we ended the year with 6,610. That's ADA. Uh, our estimate for this year ending is down with the trend in enrollment, 6,543. Uh, and then our estimate for next year is 63,59. So, so what happens with that is that generates funding for the district at four million and a half. Okay, the, that program is entitled to two and a half million, and that's the way this table is structured across the board. Uh, for the most part, all of those indicators are kept in line with enrollment. Uh, more or less, about that three percent drop. CTE has gone down to uh, a thousand twenty-three. That's going to generate six point seven million and the program is entitled to 4.8. Special ed uh, is a little wait, bit wait, different. Wait, wait, hold on, go back. You said CT is six million, what's the six eight, million? Eight, 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 eight point six. Oh, eight, eight, eight million, eight million. Okay, yes. the six, that threw me off, okay. So special ed is a little bit differently and that there's a different trend for life skills kids. They're actually on the increase. They've been on the increase since COVID. So we, we took that into account when we did That's this week. population that is continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. Do they come to school every day? Do they do this good? Sorry. Yeah, because to me, I think the AD is more central than, the, well, the enrollment too, but the AD is, drives your, your money. The money that comes in like for special ed goes only to special ed. Right or it, not? It comes in as, as a umbrella program. Okay. And and the amounts here on the far right is what we're required to spend for the program. Okay. We spend way more than 100 percent of the oh, money yeah. that we get. Right. And it's just that's just all regional and districts. That's all Texas districts. Okay. And actually, I think even the special ed budget is still operating on a deficit, right? Their budget, their special ed budget. Typically, from year to year, that's that's been the norm for, for a very long time. So we actually increased just a little bit there. They would bring in 5.2 million for the district and uh, 2.8 million for, for the program. Special ed mainstream inclusion, uh, we kept it in line with enrollment. 612 is the number. Uh, 4.3 million for the district and 2.4 million for the program. State comp is uh, now based on census group tiers, geographical locations of the kids. Uh, we kept that in line with enrollment, the same, at 12, 105. That brings in 19.2 million to the district and 10.5 million to the program. GT, just to plot it out here, this program's a little bit different. They need to spend 100% of what the state gives us as an umbrella uh, fund. Uh, 10,009 uh, is our number for next year and 238,000 is what we're projected to bring in. They need to spend that 100%. Oh, Jerry, no, look at, I think, for well, I me, mean, I was thinking what I would have wanted to see, because you know how you have the 2020-23, that particular enrollment in ADA would have provided this amount of state aid program so we could compare it to the loss. Sure, I, we can do that for, for the next meeting, just so you, you know, can have a side-by-side. -side. Do you know what a rough estimate would, not no sabes by, like what, what would that those totals be in comparison to last year, so we could see how much we lost in those areas? About three million. About three million. Okay, that's good. Five hundred students. Huh? Five hundred students. Okay. Overall, as 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 total state aid, the loss would be about three million mm -hmm. for this year ending. So that's like. He's got a stick. So, is Mr. Pettis, would that be then like about 1.5 to your general fund? Because we do 
So that means a loss of about maybe 1.5 million to your just on that. So next is our preliminary uh, property values. Still early in the game, we, we're still working to, uh, waiting to receive the certified values. Uh, they come out July um, 25th. At, at that point, we can finalize our revenue forecasting. So for now, we're just showing you the, the data as, as it came in as of last week. Uh, so the table at the top gives you um, years going back to tax year 2019. And the way it works is tax year 2019 would denote fiscal year 1920. Okay? So for tax year 2024 down at the bottom, that's actually for next year 2024, 2025. Um, what we see typically is um, that right now our property values are increasing across the board uh, for the state. Uh, from last year to this year, our property value grew from 2.2 billion to uh, 2.3 billion. Right? And that's as, as of uh, last Tuesday. That's an increase of 6.6%. Uh, Hidalgo County also dropped in their, in their uh, percentage of growth. Mm -hmm. And that is from 15 to 10. Okay. And that's what that plots down there is the trend is very much in line with the county. Uh, the uh, red is, uh, is us. That's our percentage growth. Mm -hmm. So you see there the uh, little drop there for us. And the same thing happened for Hidalgo County as a whole. Very much in line. Mr. Charles, do you have an example of that? What do you mean by, I'm reading property values, but then you say growth. <clears throat> yes. Growth and values to me is two different things. So if you look at the DISD column, and you look at tax year 2023, yeah. values, assessed values last year were two point. Uh, 2 billion. Mm -hmm. This year, unofficially, is 2.3. Right. So that's right. a growth of 6%. Oh, but okay. I'm, I, I literally took growth, meaning that we're getting more property businesses or more homes. But technically, it'd be like my house is an example. The same yeah. home and all that, but it, 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 values, it got, yeah, it got better. So the 100%, I mean, the 100,000 homestead exemption went out the window. Right. Okay, I got you. The next are our taxi parameters. This is how uh, the uh, Hidalgo County rolls it out for us. Land came in at 1.6 billion. Improvements at 2 billion. Non-real property at 250 million. And our exemptions back out about 1.6 billion. The, these are homestead for over 65 and agriculture basically. Uh, net taxable values again restated is 203 billion. And you can see the uh, split there. So land makes up about 42% of the assessed values and improvements about 52. Our preliminary tax rate and values compared there, we gave you some data going back to 2019. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to focus on uh, year 2022 and forward. So 2021, uh, our M and O uh, tax rate was 99.03, uh, and our INS was 12.96 for a total tax rate of uh, 111.99. Uh, our property values at that point were 1.9 billion, and then you see the change for 2023. Mm -hmm. So uh, the state compressed. Our, um, our tax values for M and O, and we came in at, at 97.29, okay? At the same time, we made a change at that point for INS to take advantage of tax of uh, interest rates, and we came in at 14.70. Total tax rate was $1.12, basically, again, so it stayed very much in line. 2024, we had a M&O uh, tax further compressed, uh, and that's just state mandated, to 75, 75. Mm -hmm. We went out for the bond, of course, so our uh, INS rate had to go up just a bit. Yeah. So what is forecasted for the coming school year is a small compression, very, very small. 
uh, moving from, your m is moving from 75.75 to 75.52, okay? You're also seeing property values increase, right? So what that means is a slight bump in your tax bill, more or less. Not very much substantial because we did grow just a little bit and, and we're compressed. Wealth per ADA, we wanted to plot this out for you and, and, um, and show you where we are in comparison to prior years. So this year, ranking from the poorest districts in Texas to the richest, we are 19th. We're the 19th poorest. By rule of thumb, the poorer you are, the more state aid you get. So good for finance, right? Good for the district. Um, in 2021, we ranked 14. And then we got a little bit richer. We went down to 19th next year, and this year we're staying in line on, the, on number 19. We used to be like at the very top, no, at one point. Yes, I remember. Top five. So disaster pennies, we are looking into pursuing disaster pennies to bring in some more revenue. Uh, the governor has actually come out and declared disasters for drought and also for flooding. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be taking advantage of, of that. I wanted to kind of come in and, and plot those numbers out for you to see how they're going to, to impact uh, the district. So as stated, uh, is our m and tax rate for uh, year 23-24 was 0.7575. Our INS was 30, is actually 31.34 for a total tax rate of $1.07. Okay? For 2025, our m and is projected to go down to 75.75, and our INS is just increasing just slightly, right? Uh, $1.728 is, um, is our projected tax rate at this, at this point. Estimated collections for m and are gonna be 16 million, 6.8 for INS, and a total collections of 23 million. So down at the bottom, you'll find three scenarios, adding one penny to M and O, okay. So adding one penny to M and O, just going down the down the first column, would add uh, two hundred and eleven thousand nine hundred and twenty-two in tax collections. We would bring in that much more. Uh, additional state aid will be five hundred and eighty zero thirty-seven, and we bring in additional revenue of seven uh, seven hundred ninety-one thousand nine hundred fifty-nine. Okay. Adding two pennies would net. Uh, uh, 1.6 million, almost. And adding three pennies will bring in almost 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we do recommend pursuing the three pennies mm -hmm. if possible. Okay. Of course, we still have to talk to our financial advisors and right. do all that. So. And we're gonna have a very active hurricane season. I think so. Mm -hmm. Our budget planning update, uh, just a timeline of, of activities and what we do. Uh, we start early, January and February. Our HR team is busy with their initial personnel review and validations. March through April, we conduct stakeholder meetings. We bring in uh, every department head, campuses, we discuss needs, prioritize. In May, we get the compensation plan approved. And we also have our preliminary tax rate and revenues forecast ready, which is what primarily you see today. Uh, in June, we make our final uh, marks on our personnel budget validations. And July, we uh, have the final tax rate and revenues forecasted once the uh, Hidalgo County releases the certified values. And then in August, we approve the tax rate budget. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you guys? Uh, July 16th is the day that we're going to set for we're going to set the public hearing. That'll uh, be our July 4th meeting. So we'll we'll do that right prior to the the board meeting starting. Sure. When do you all come back, Dr. Lucas? The 15th of July. Wow. The 15th. That's right. Are going to be ready for us? That's fast. We'll, we'll be working on it. We know. July 31st, uh, we'll have the notice of public hearing. It's a Tuesday. 
Uh, and then the August 6th, we'll have work workshop number three. And then our public hearing is going to be August 13th. At that point, we'll set the tax rate, approve the budget, and approve the certified rule. Yeah. Oh, y'all are bringing the budget approval on August 13th? Mm -hmm. We're aiming for the 13th, yes. Nice. Good. Ooh, so any questions from, uh, from the board? Lots of questions. Let me have the answers. <laughs> no, I think that uh, those who spend a lot of time on discussing the enrollment in the VA, and obviously I think that it's, it's really important that uh, it really, this message gets conveyed uh, down to the teacher, to the student obviously at the campus level, with, with full support from the principals. Um, and, and yes, I know we keep using the word COVID, 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 but you know, that's behind us. we got to go forward. And uh, it could be an issue district-wide, I mean, uh, valley-wide, state-wide, but it's time that we everybody rezone and focus on Don ISD and you know, let's keep pulling to the front. We've, we've done many, many great things as a district, all of you. And this is one thing that we really need to have total focus and commitment because we haven't done greatly on this. We ourselves as a district. Um, and again, comparable to others, well, yes, we already discussed that, but in our district, we really come up with a game plan that is going to be totally different and effective so that we can bring these kids back because Absolutely. at the end of the day, it's, it's, what's, going, it's what's going to make the, the programs function. And programs, obviously, is the educational needs for all our kids. We see great things. Uh, the uh, the pre-K to second, those scores that came back were, were phenomenal. So those kiddos will be in third grade next year. And and obviously the, the preliminary results and some of the other scores that came back already uh, look promising. Some of them are going to need some major uh, refocusing uh, to, to improve. But all, all that just it revolves around, around the budget and, and the funding. And of course the funding revolves around are the kiddos in school. So. You know, in a nutshell, it's just we, we need to be working together and I'll uh, yield to anybody else. Any other trustee that wants to make a comment or anything? Good report, Jerry. Mr. Pitts. Good report, thank you. And, and great discussion. I, I think, you know, I took a lot of notes today so we can really dig in and come up with something. We're, we're just going to have to figure out some different ways to, to reach our, our families and yeah. um, New and innovative ideas to, to get kids in the in the door. So mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll be working on a comprehensive plan to share back with trustees that gets a little deeper on the strategic side for what happens at each mm -hmm. campus around bringing kids in. Not necessarily related to the work, uh, workshop, but I know that you mentioned you will be closing June twentieth, the district. Yes, sir. And you open up on uh, July the fifteenth. So that yes, time in between, are we going to have a, are, are you going to have someone in between a stagger schedule? Because the last thing we need is that employees, potential employees that are going to come into the district. Well, HR are going to be we, we have a staggered staff in the HR and business and office. Business, yeah, the, the business the office program. has staggered right mm -hmm. much. So your I mean, business will yeah. be staggered and HR will be staggered. Because of the payroll. payroll. Mm -hmm. okay. have to be there and obviously you've got a whatever you have. Only for the campus principal, so they'll know the person that they're recommending yes, or auxiliary departments. Okay. 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 Let's read it. This requires action under letter A, human resources. I'll read it for you. Approval of revisions to the 24-25 the compensation plan. If there are no questions or comments, I need a motion. I approve. The motion made by Ms. Garcia, second by Mrs. Castillo. Ever Castillo Watts. Mr. Reyna, how do you vote? In favor. Mr. Valdez? Uh, in favor. Dr. Valdez? In favor. Two in favor. This motion uh, passes. And now I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Garcia. Second by Mrs. Garcia. Mr. Brina, how do you vote? In favor. 
Aye. On this? In favor. Left on this? In favor. I too vote in favor. It is now 209. This meeting is adjourned.